Good morning, everybody. So today is kind of just a off the cuff、uh, episode. I just am gonna do this solo here at my desk in it's like at like nine fifteen a.m. and I got my cup of coffee going. I had a thin bagel with some cream cheese. Uh, not a bad morning, and I think、uh, just kind of in the lieu of things right now, I'm a little bit on hold for an interview coming up, so I'm really excited to get that going. It's been about oh shoot, how long has it even been? I think it's been about over a year since we had the last、uh, guest on an interview for Tree Bark, so I really wanted to kick that back off and try to get that ball rolling again and build up momentum where I get to talk to artists and performers in the community. To just get a lot more perspectives going and try to broaden my horizon on like how they develop themselves as a creator, and how they get themselves out and like in the doors of like you know different opportunities and stuff, and just create their livings at doing what they love. I think that's what I set out to do with this podcast originally, even though、uh, it's gotten a more casual format. But I'm still. Way more, I think, invested than I've ever been before, and I always want to try and create and do new things、uh, with this kind of VR space and、uh, audio podcast format. I, I've I've been really recently thinking about Tree Bark as a hub to do just anything、uh, with with this platform. You can really make anything possible, and I've been recently thinking that. Uh, like for other channels like Game Grumps or other big Let's Play channels, it's like why don't they also just put their、uh, audio clips as like a podcast and put it on just MP3 based platforms? Because most of the time, I think I listen to、uh, Game Grumps and just Let's Plays in general. Like on the YouTube app, and then I just put it to the headphone mode, so I'm mostly not even. Watching the content as I am just mostly listening and consuming it that way,、uh, so yeah, I've been thinking that if Tree Bark is this、uh, audio platform, even if I'm doing like these visual things here,、uh, why not just share that in all of the ways that I could possibly? I don't know why I haven't seen too many people do that, and maybe that's actually because it's a bit of a redundant formula. So if, like I even said, it's kind of redundant if you can listen to content. Audio wise on YouTube in the background on your phone with some Bluetooth, you know, earbuds and stuff. Then why post it specifically without video on another audio platform?、Uh, and it's really interesting. A lot of the places now, like I think、uh, Spotify, and most recently, if you go to Anchor FM, there's they're supporting now video MP4 and. They already do a helpful thing, well, that where they'll take like a YouTube link if you posted your podcast with a video format, they'll rip the audio from that and then post that and plug it straight to your channel, where you can host it as just an MP3. But recently, I think that they're doing the Spotify method and they're also in- incorporating video formats, so you could also watch while you listen. So it's kind of interesting that even this this very audio based platform is converting to sort of a YouTube. Space, even though they're mostly focused on the audio platforms shows, so like Joe Rogan and Critical Role and like a whole lot of other、uh, audio-based platforms I follow and listen to on the daily, I I can now consume just by watching them. So there's a ton of options, and I think like options are always good to just watch、uh, what people want to consume, and it gives people. Again, more freedom to choose the way they want to consume the content. So that's probably the future of how that's going to be handled.、Uh, since I'm still kind of riffing right now, I'm honestly、uh, just still trying to warm up my vocals. I <laughs> I hope、uh, I'm not just spewing out total garbage.、Um, as of late, I, I guess this is a good opportunity where I can give a personal update.、Uh, so. Although things have been pretty stable and consistent at you know like work and family relationship stuff wise,、um, I recently had a good a really good conversation and heart to heart with Blarg, my boyfriend, and we went on a walk with the dog and it was a good couple miles, but I think it was really valuable because、uh, I really needed to just kind of vent and talk about what it means to be a creative person and what it. What it takes to be successful at being 
creative, business savvy, and sharing yourself on the internet like this. Um, it, it, it's been very difficult for me to parse sort of the checklist of things that a person has to go through on both the creative and business side of things to really, I, I feel like I'm just repeating myself, but to be successful, I feel like that's a lot of the background knowledge and the stuff that you don't see from your favorite people that you watch online where they, they have like an Excel sheet of things that they have to, you know, tick off to meet the basic living requirements that they have. Um, everybody's got a different deck of cards where it's like, okay, how do I best play these cards so that I can continue to do what I love and live off of it. Um, so it was a really like kind of broad talk about how how can I at least tackle um, feeling confident about setting goals and obtaining those those checkpoints um, to then further what it is that uh, I don't know whatever it is that I'm doing, but the point is I'm doing art. And I'm trying to just basically make the living at the art. Uh, I don't know how to put that more forward, but um, I guess it can get, get kind of boring and stale when you talk about it like that because it's not just the fun, kooky, entertaining aspects of what you're watching. Because like if you watched every actor break down how they act or whatever, it seeing how the sausage is made, so to speak, is like sort of ruining the magic of just what you're consuming. But I'm, at, I'm, I'm very much focused on always in the background of my mind, like what is the inflection point for, for getting to where you can sustain yourself as an artist, uh, enjoy what you're making, balancing that kind of burnout and creativity drive and momentum, and just making sure that you have a stable enough platform and base for yourself as a foundation so that if anything comes your way, you can pivot and you know how to be flexible and be entrepreneurial and just not let like the slightest wind blow down what you've built up so far uh so yeah i really i really feel like uh, at the end of the day as i'm continuing this not to be too meta but as i'm making what you're seeing now i'm still trying to forward and better myself at that and i'm i still really enjoy it and i still can't think of anything else that I would rather do with my time, sweat, blood, and tears because that's at the end of the day something fun that I can look forward to and just share with others because I feel like sharing a story is sort of the epitome and the secret sauce of what uh, after like hours and hours of thinking about this over like kind of restless nights, um, that's, that's what it takes. It takes your ability to share your experiences and um, share them with others specifically uh, to to really engage with people. That's that's what's important. That's the most engaging thing. If you have a story to tell, if you have a fun experience, if you're having fun while doing it, while making or creating something, that is what it takes to kick off what you are doing, whatever in your life. I think that that's what's important. Um, so <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of expounding on very direct and simple things but for me to always think about them every day and and put myself out there kind of confidently without any hesitation and know that what I'm doing every day is important uh, that's what matters um blarg also brought up a really good point about like some of the people that he looks up to and respects in the creative community and that's like for him I think one of his superstars that he really looks up to is Markiplier. So for Markiplier to show constantly, to show up every day, to do the Let's Plays, to make all these different kinds of content um, is really motivating. And it's not that, you know, you just want to be popular. You just want to uh, have this quote unquote kind of fame. It's like, no, you just, in, in a way, everybody I think wants a legacy. And more importantly, Blarg broke it down to me that he when he makes something, and he shares it, he would like people to think about, you know, what he's done and what work that he put into this thing because uh, as of late, he's been working on this space project and he's put in a lot of effort editing, sound designing, m drafting all of these scenes and scripts and, and, and getting people involved even, you know, to just do some voice work. And I think that that has been super cool and it has motivated me to do my own projects um, that's one of the things that like it really takes uh, 
you know, it takes a lot of work and dedication, but at the same time, all of that is being motivated by his drive to just put out a fun, cool project. And it's this creative bug that is really nice to just be in the flow of. So uh, a good motivator also was, um, I think it was, there was a slight interview with Markiplier about how he approaches making content and, and, and always not caring about, you know, like, what if I don't do this? Or like, what if I fail at this thing? Um, one major point was that you can always imagine yourself that you're starting with nothing. And I think for the most part, if you haven't made something, you, you are starting with nothing. So that is to say, what do you have to lose by pursuing the thing that you want to make? You can only make more stuff and you learn and you build and you put this ball together of stuff. So I, I guess you can kind of think of, think of it as like a foil ball. You can just compact it and smooth it. And as you keep going along, you're, you're polishing it and it's getting nice and shiny and it's, it's looking better and better each time you try to tackle it. And you've started with nothing, so you only add to this ball. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly how he put it, but that's the way I view it. Um, you have nothing to lose because you start with nothing. That's, that's the point, and I don't think I can emphasize that enough. Um, when you are putting yourself out there each time in a similar way, I think you are getting more confident and less fearful about messing up because when you mess up, you know how to sort of tuck and roll and put yourself out there and then recuperate and, and then just have fun and kind of laugh at yourself when you do fall and stumble because it's like, whoa, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm, I still have my like kind of my North star up in the sky and I'm, I want to pursue that thing. So when, when I, I, I see myself at least getting up every time I, I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing a direction. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, but I mean, I, I guess I can kind of di digress. Uh, the, the main point is still the one I'm always making and I'm always trying to learn more philosophies and like deeper ways of, harboring that kind of that kind of like motivation and mindset of what it takes to put yourself out there to do what you love to be successful at it and just accrue that experience because you got nothing to lose so you know just just get it <laughs> um yeah if if this at all is like motivating it's it's definitely like something that i can never get too tired of talking about and i think that's also why it funnels into my own projects, like this is uh, something that I want to do where, again, like I'm interviewing people, I'm talking about what they love, and then you get this really nice feedback about being, hearing somebody else be so fun and into what they're doing, no matter what it is, it could be stamp collecting, it could be penny collecting, it could be video gaming, it could be singing, dancing, um, it, whatever it is that you're doing, if, if you hear somebody's passion in their voice, and again, this is getting meta, but I don't really care at this point, but you you sort of listen, your ears perk up and you, you hear the vibrato and you hear that energy. And it's like, this person's taking this seriously and like they're they're on this adventure and I just kind of want to be a part of the ride. I, I'm really excited to at least see where they're going and where they're going to take this. Um, so you can't just help, but even if you're on the sidelines, you can just support that and you can you can listen for a bit and just admire like the, the passion behind that person. And that's why I think it's actually sort of easy for me to talk to people when they are really motivated by something because you just have to listen. Like you don't, you don't even have to worry about, you know, what you're going to say next. It's just this constant, you know, back and forth of just listening and maybe asking a few things about, you know, like how they got to that point and where they're going to go next, but it's all based off of interest. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, my heart, my heart is kind of racing at this point a little bit, but um, yeah, I just want to do more interviews with really cool people, and I feel like I've every time I get a chance to just sort of spiel about this type of creative um, adventure that I'm on and and that my friends are on, that's it's really motivating and I always have to appreciate them and thank blog for always being an ear for me to sort of vent and then bounce ideas off of as well as get some, you know, nuggets of knowledge that I never considered or 
haven't told myself yet. So it's really important to just just put yourself out there and start talking about what you want and then taking actions on the things that you want to see in the world. So that's sort of been this motivating podcast episode. <laughs> uh, what do I have on the docket? For myself, um, I think what I sort of had to pinpoint exactly uh, at, in terms of a project is finishing my Howl and Jasper comic. That is something that I have to dedicate the most amount of time and effort and, and brain power of my himbo smooth brain that I have left to just finish it. Because I know once I have that done, I can put that in my gallery. I can look at it. It'll be there just like all of my past commissions. But it'll be this huge story that is compiled that has like maybe 25 pages if I think I can handle that. And it'll be done. I can also turn that into a physical or digital comic book and then sell that. That is something that also then accrues into the sort of the business aspect of things where it's like this thing that I made, it's also going to help me in the future. And I can always like look back on it and build off of it. So that's what I want to take with every little thing that I do. Um, but it's just going to have to take that little bit of diligence and discipline to make sure that I set these uh, smart goals and there's, it's an acronym. Um, I think uh, the Bay taught me it uh, when he was learning uh, some college management courses. So they, they teach like the SMART goal of setting like specific, I forget the acronym already. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But S-M-A-R-T is this way to make a simple, specific goal that you can achieve that's realistic and manageable and measurable and very timely. I, it, it's something that gravitates around those concepts. So you can make something very tangible for yourself to achieve. And I feel like I have that ability to do that with my comic. And I'm not going to pressure myself to burn out or anything, but I, I want to finish it this year. And I want to have that to sell to people and make the next best thing and on to the next project. So finishing your projects is very important. And all the while, um, you know, I'm doing commissions, I'm doing fun stuff on this side, but I have a background larger uh, goal. I have that North Star. So that's that's basically it. Um, if I, I don't know if I have anything else to cover right now, but <laughs> man, that coffee is kicking in good right now. Uh, so thanks for listening, guys. Uh, if you guys have any comments or concerns about the channel or what it is that I'm doing and maybe can improve, I would just love that sort of engagement and just hear that even a bit of criticism to to show like hey like your audio levels are a bit bad this is what you can do um i just i just want to get better and uh i feel like uh at least for the oh wait oh no <laughs> holy crap okay wait i'm so sorry okay so like little bit of background stuff happening uh we hit my house just had a brownout and it totally dropped everything and uh my computer shut off and the bay's stream died midstream um are you guys still here okay uh i'm trying to discombobulate and get this thing back up and going um oh no oh no i gotta get the vc face uh, okay there we go back to the magic uh so i think this is <laughs> this is also kind of topical i'm glad that the power only kind of cut off at the tail end of the episode but yeah, uh, so I would love to hear some comments or concerns that you guys have with the stuff that I make. Uh, and any feedback I can get would be really wonderful, and I would really appreciate that. And even you taking the time to watch this right now is really awesome, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, the Any other last things? Hmm, hmm. Is there any other like small things that I can't think of right now? No, I should probably end this before the next power outage, but I guess that's part of like the tuck and roll of what I was talking about before. So I'm just going to end it on a good high note and I'm going to go and get back to art and get back to the interviews. So I will see you guys very soon and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Mwah. Hello folks, uh, you made it to the end of the video and I wanted to congratulate you with this ad. If you want to check out more things that I do and keep up with my creative projects, you can follow my Twitter at Shikokubo, that's S-H-I-K-O-K-U-B-O. Uh, fair warning, it is pretty wild west up there, so whatever you see is what you get. 
and I am not taking responsibility. But if you want to check out my Patreon, that's also at Shikokubo. That's S H I K O K U B O. And I generally treat it as a tip jar. So if you'd like to just throw some fun bucks my way, it goes a very long way for me, my projects, and the show. So I'll just still make this stuff, but a little goes a long way, and I really appreciate it. So I hope you guys have a great day and take care. Bye bye.